Today I'm going to talk about the top five mistakes we see with intermittent fasting at thefastingmethod.com. And stick around to the end, I'm going to share Leanne's story, who was able to fix a lot of these problems, and now loves the fact that she feels able to control her food and not have the food control her. Tip number five, get out of the kitchen. This might seem obvious, but you want to avoid being in the kitchen when you're fasting because the reminders to eat are going to be all around you. This happens sometimes when people are in a small space and they're working from home and the kitchen table is the biggest area they have. That might be difficult, but you might want to move yourself to a smaller room where you're not going to be constantly reminded with the stove, with the refrigerator, with the pantry there, that you could just go there and get something to eat or snack on if you feel bored. You want to make it difficult for yourself to get the food, so you want to put everything away. The other problem we see is when people prepare the foods. So if they have to prepare for the rest of the family, while they are fasting, they can't exactly not cook. There are several ways around this. One is to prepare ahead of time so that your significant other or your kids can simply reheat the meals and you won't actually have to be there to see the food, to smell the food, and that might make you salivate and start thinking about food, which is obviously going to be very difficult when you're fasting. The other thing, of course, is perhaps to have them go somewhere else to eat. Perhaps they can go out to eat or they can go over to a friend's house or to your grandparents' house or choose a day where you're going to be alone so that you don't have those problems. Fasting mistake number four, going it alone. It's really, really hard to do stuff if you're just by yourself. And this is true not just for fasting, but for anything you want to do, whether it's playing sports or learning a craft or a hobby or something like that. It's always easier when you have friends to share tips with, to commiserate with, to uh, talk to while you're doing these things. So it's important to find that community who is going to support your fasting. This is something we try to provide at thefastingmethod.com where you can get into that community and find people to talk to. If not, you can go online. There's lots of social media. There are Facebook groups that are free. There are online forums that you can join. The best is still face-to-face. -face. So if you can talk to a close friend who's going through something very similar, that's probably the best thing. Fasting mistake number three, emotional eating. One of the things we understand about eating is that it's not simply about being hungry. There are many, many, many reasons why we eat. And one of the biggest things is for emotions. Food makes us feel good and that's why we eat them. This is a problem if you're trying to fast, yet your body wants you to eat for completely different reasons. People eat when they're happy, people eat when they're sad, people eat when they're trying to feel better about themselves, uh, and this is a big problem, so you have to plan ahead. If you're happy and you know that you want to eat to celebrate, try and switch that habit for something else and plan ahead of time. Perhaps you can go for a walk, go for a hike, you can get a massage, you can take a relaxing bath. Maybe you can buy yourself a book to read or you can perhaps find something that you enjoy doing like a manicure or a pedicure or something that you can celebrate with that's not food. So for emotional eating, you gotta know your triggers and plan ahead with a list of things that you wanna get through. Fasting mistake number two, watching too much regular TV. If you ever watch TV regularly, you see that there's lots and lots of commercials and almost always you're gonna see something for either fast food or ice cream or some kind of snack food. And that's deliberate. The food companies are trying to get you to think about food so that you either go get some more food or you go out and buy whatever they're advertising for. It works on all of us. We can't help it, we're human. 
the one thing you can do is switch to something else. It doesn't have to be regular TV. You don't have to watch Food Network, for example, where there's constantly pictures of food to tempt you. You can instead switch to, for example, a streaming service where you're not going to see the same number of commercials or YouTube or other internet sites that are going to provide the same sort of entertainment minus all those commercials. Even better, you could get off the screen completely, perhaps read a book, do a jigsaw puzzle, something else that you really enjoy doing, but not exposing you to the constant commercials that are designed to make you want to eat. Fasting mistake number one, artificial sweeteners. This one's always a tricky one because it sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Perhaps you can take something that is sweet but has no calories and it isn't sugar. The promise has been with us for decades. We started using artificial sweeteners years and years ago. And unfortunately, the promise of easy weight loss has not been realized. It's not for lack of trying. We see sweeteners everywhere, diet sodas, for example, but also sugar-free cookies and all other forms of so-called healthier snacks. But the truth is that it doesn't work. When was the last time a friend ever said to you, oh, I just switched to diet soda, lost 25 pounds? While it sounds like it should work, the bottom line is that it doesn't. The reasons are not entirely clear, but it's likely that the intense sweetness caused by the artificial sweetener makes us crave more food and that's going to make it very difficult to not eat and very difficult to do intermittent fasting. Think about an appetizer. This is a small portion of food but it doesn't deaden your appetite. That small amount of food we know stimulates your appetite and this is the same thing that sweeteners do. When you take it your brain starts to salivate. You're, you're, you're salivating, you're thinking about food, you're thinking about all the delicious other things that you're going to take in the meantime and it's going to make it very difficult for you to not eat or to fast. So the first thing you need to do is really get rid of all those sweeteners whether they have calories like sugar or they don't have calories. You need to cut them out. It's going to feel strange for the first couple of weeks